Good afternoon, Average Engineers. Today, I'm going to talk about something exciting. At least, I think it's, I think it's exciting. Databricks Labs came out with a new data quality tool called DQX. It's a data quality tool made for PySpark, and it is sweet. So honestly, data quality has been one of those topics that it just comes and goes over the years within the data community. It's like clockwork back and forth. You hear about it, you don't hear about it. I think the probably the two most popular ones people will know about, even though a lot of people don't know about them, is Great Expectations and Soda Core or Soda. And those are the two big ones. I've checked them out before. I might leave links to how I've used them with Spark in the past. Anywho, it's exciting to have another new tool to use, and I've checked it out, and I just want to give you a quick overview of this DQX tool from Databricks Labs. By the way, you don't have to use it specifically inside Databricks. This tool will basically work with any PySpark data frame, but, I mean, it is pretty sweet comparatively, I would say, to SodaCore and Great Expectations. It's a lot simpler to use, straightforward. Um, let's get into it here. I just want to have just a quick little background on some of these other tools, you know, like Great expectations are PyDQ. DQ is a data quality tool for Spark is made a long time ago. PyDQ is like the Python version of that. And honestly, these tools are just complicated. Every time I've tried to use anything like grid expectations, PyDQ, they're just so flipping complicated. There's so much setup for them. It's almost like a project unto itself. And honestly, in the past, like grid expectations, it basically you had to generate a project and just mass amounts of yaml files just tons of crap and it's super complicated just to do data quality i think that's part of the problem that's why a lot of people haven't done it or don't use those tools even though they're decent i know a lot of people use great expectations it's okay but honestly they're not really that simple to use like here's an image of you know what PyDQ does and i mean it's kind of like okay it's a lot going on there just for a data quality tool um a while ago, I wrote about, wrote about great expectations, and you know you can look at this. Basically, had some play data I was playing around with. And I want to make an expectation. This is just like one tiny YAML file, just to do the smallest thing, and that's not even it. I could show you the rest of the code of just making this stuff work. It's just a nightmare. So much code, honestly. These data quality pipelines, so far, they could be more complex than your normal business pipelines just because of the configuration setup. And I think I think Databricks solved that problem with DQX. It is not like that at all. So if you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead over to the DQX GitHub page under Databricks Labs. Check it out. Uh, let's just go through some of the highlights at a super high level. It's made for PySpark data frames. I'm just going to go through a list of things here that it can do just to give you an idea. Invalid data can be quarantined to make sure bad data is never written in the output, aka you can run it against a check and it'll actually split out the data into two different data frames the good stuff that passed the bad stuff it kind of like pulls out in quarantines which is pretty nice it has support for spark batch and streaming even dlt tables delta live tables and databricks if you want you can have different reactions on failed checks like you can drop them or mark them or quarantine them if that makes sense it has support for like warnings like levels check levels is this just a warning or an error etc uh, it has support for quality rules at the row and column level so at a row level and column level that's kind of nice it does have some of the typical stuff where it can have profiling and generative data quality rule candidates all the tools are kind of like that you can just kind of pass in a data set and it'll like profile the data and give you suggestions for data quality rules although i think dqx does it a little bit nicer than most tools but the other tools do that too and of course it has you can have check definitions as code or config so there's multiple ways to do it yaml files are in code to actually write the checks and I haven't checked this part out, but it does come with a validation summary and data quality dashboard. I think if you're in Databricks, it'll, I don't have to go read all about it and look into it. I'm not really going to get into that part of it, but it does, you know, come with a data quality tracking dashboard, which would probably make it a little bit more complex if you wanted to do that sort of thing. Uh, what's nice about DQX is that you can just pip install it. Um, you can see the commands here. You just can either do pip install Databricks Labs DQX, or if you're inside a Databricks environment, you can just Databricks Lab install DQX. Either one works. I did the pip install. It works fine and great. I kind of made this little visual of how DQX works generally speaking. So you have DQX, the Python library. You can either have a config file, you can have these YAML checks if you want it kind of feeds in there. You send your data frame to it. It 
does have a dashboard if you want. It also has a, you know, you can profile the data. So it kind of gives you, you know, what I think the check should be, right? If you're not sure about the data, you're new to the data, it'll kind of go through the data and tell you, hey, this is null or not, or these values only exist. It should only be in one of these values. Or you can just write your own checks like we'll look at in a bit, and it can either err or warning, warn on those checks, and you can either basically add that as like a row onto the data frame, and it comes out and you can do your own thing with it, or you can actually have it quarantined, so it kind of like come back with two data frames, one with a good data frame, one with a bad data frame. That's what's pretty nice. That's just a high level overview of kind of how DQX works. So let's check it out in the actual code. I'm going to use a Divi bike trip data set. You can see a sample of it here in my Databricks notebook. And this, we're going to write some checks basically for this basically data. This is a CSV file of open source data. And let's write some, let's basically write some DQX and see how this tool works. So here's basically the code, just the very basic code you have to load up to give a data frame and get the basic default stats. So here's all the imports. Uh, here, you know, we're reading the file we just looked at. You basically start a workspace client. You start a profiler. So the profiler is what would actually give us the default checks. It kind of profiles that data for us. If we want that, you don't need that or have to do that by any means. You can see here we call the profile profile on data frame and it gives us summary stats and profiles. I printed those out here. Let's go look at them. I mean, it's a lot to look there. It's in JSON basically, but you know, there's the summary stats. It's giving you count non roll no you know how many of this column is null how many is not null you know what's the writable type you know this column kind of thing what's in here what's the min max value it's just like all a bunch of crap that i don't really think that anyone would ever use but whatever it's there if you want summary stats on your data set here are the profiles so uh, we can basically take those profiles of the data frame and it will generate a default validation checks based on that so you take that profile that we see here which is just again a bunch of crap about our data frame that we just pressed in it profiles it can see here this little bit of code we can get a generator and basically generate dq rules on that profile that we just created of that data frame we can basically print that to yaml and save dump it basically saying hey this is an easy way to make a yaml file of data quality checks that are just maybe some default ones on a data set and this is basically what that prints out you can say oh look at that here's checks it's saying hey column name underscore z c0 which basically means i should have read that data frame with headers because it has headers so that's kind of my fault but it's basically saying hey that first column you know it's not null that's basically never null so here's a check to check that for example right or for example here's another check saying these are the arguments that are allowed in the second column underscore c1 so it'd be like the second column there these are the arguments that are allowed meaning it can only be electric bike classic bike or writable type a writable type and again that writable type is actually the header name so i'm just messed up but you get the point here it's basically saying hey these are the only allowed values in this data frame in that column so it's kind of giving those basic checks that's not bad i mean most people probably know their data so they don't I mean maybe it's just a shortcut way to make validation checks maybe not so that's pretty cool with dqx that you can do that pretty straightforward of course we could write our own checks so basically that yaml you saw we could write our own of course and then just load those you can see here as an example of that we can get our checks by just taking that dq engine and reading checks from a file from a yaml file of whatever we've done pretty simple and straightforward if you wanted to do that um, you can also write yaml file and just python code as a string and load it that way as well but here's another yeah so here's an example of basically defining checks and code so say you didn't want this ton of files around you could actually use python and code to actually make a check so you can see here i am doing a dq rule column set so it's like columns are writable type and write id the check is going to be critical meaning it'll err if it fails and the check function is these are default ones provided that are basically is not null does that make sense? So it's basically saying writable type and write ID cannot be null. That's just a check that I'm defining in code. That's pretty interesting. There's multiple ways to write checks. We can kind of string them together. You see they're just like a list in Python. I'm making another rule saying, hey, the start at, started at is not null or empty. That's the name of my check. It's a critical error check. And you can see the check equals is not null and not empty in the started at column. And these are basically default provided ones in the Python DQX engine 
the Python package provides these sort of default checks that I can define in code. And you can see me doing it there. And then of course I want to show you this down here at the bottom. You can see that we can apply those checks and split. So it's taking that DQ engine, take the data frame and the checks that we just wrote, we can pass the data frame in. We can say split, meaning give me my valid data frame back and then get me a quarantine data frame as there's some records that don't meet that because I don't want them to go onto production. Pretty interesting. Or if you just want them all in the same, you know, just add it as a column in the same data frame, you can just apply checks, pass it to the data frame, the checks, and you'll just get a single data frame with an extra column. Pretty nice, pretty simple, honestly, it's pretty cool. One thing that I thought I wanted to show you about DQX that I thought was pretty awesome, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of you SQL hobbits will love this because you don't know how to write good code, so you can all, you, all you, can do is write SQL, so this is good for you. You know, DQX actually provides SQL data quality checks. You can see here is that SQL quality check. The criticality is an error, so if it fails, it's going to error. Here's the check. It's a SQL expression, so you check function equals SQL expression. And the argument is we can actually just write in the SQL, so we can say, Hey, in this case, we want our ended at time of the ride has to be greater than the started at time. I mean, it can't be negative. You can't start the bike, end the bike ride before you start it. That means that's a data quality issue. You can actually attach a message for it there saying the ended at is greater than started at. And wow, look at that. You can define it data quality checks in SQL. How nice is that? And then as well, you can just use plain old Python. So you can almost type what I would call a UDF basically making, I'm going to define my own check in Python. You can see an example of that here. Basically, you can see I'm DQ, I'm importing from Databricks Labs, DQX column functions, import make condition, and basically I make my own condition there of saying, hey, this column ends with bike, meaning, you know, it has to end with underscore bike for the certain column name. Um, you know, you could do whatever, right? It's just whatever you could write your own Python you have to check whatever you wanted really you know what I really like about DQX is that it's flipping simple to use I mean I really hope Databricks puts more effort into marketing this tool I really haven't seen much about it I mean I just kind of ran across it by accident I'm like what the heck this thing is sweet man why aren't they talking about this more all the other tools out there I mean I know they're trying to improve them there has been new versions of the grid expectations that reduce the complexity to use these tools but honestly, this is the simplest tool I've ever seen to do data quality on PySpark data frames. I'm sure somebody will complain that it's just for PySpark, but you know, whatever. That's what most people are using these days. And man, it is a sweet tool. It's easy. You can define checks simply in code or with SQL. It doesn't require a bunch of config or anything. Just a pip install and then just a couple lines of code. Man, this is pretty nice. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to using it in the future. I hope you guys go check out their GitHub page. I'll put a link to an article I wrote more in depth about this topic. Go check it out. See ya.